When you ask most people to close their eyes and picture Captain Marvel, oops, I mean Shazam, the first thing they imagine is probably something like this. Look at this graph. Comic readers and fans of Cartoon Network's Justice League action may be familiar with Kazam, damn it, I mean Shazam, but the upcoming movie is the first time general audiences will be introduced to the world's mightiest mortal. The 1940s were a wild, speculative time for superheroes. After National Comics, the precursor to Detective Comics, struck gold with Superman, everyone hustled to come up with their own caped crusader. Over at Fawcett, C.C. Beck and Bill Parker developed a character who transforms from a normal kid into a being with the power of six mythical figures after he yells the name Escapism has always been a key aspect of fiction's allure, but children really gravitated towards Captain Marvel's stories in the 40s. As Billy Batson, the young child was powerless to impact the world around him, but after muttering a magic word, he could take things in his own hands and directly make things better. At the time, the American public was being bombarded with propaganda, exclaiming how everyone had a role to play in the war effort so a character who made kids believe their actions could have consequences was bound to be a hit. While Superman may be the top dog now, Shazam was arguably more popular in the 40s, dominating the sales charts and becoming the first superhero with his own film adaptation. Shazam! Wiz Comics number 2, the character's debut issue, sold half a million copies, and the character quickly earned his own series a year later. His cartoonish charm made him a hit with kids, and creators quickly developed a spin-off family to grow the dedicated fanbase. Introducing heroes like Mary Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr. told audiences that girls and handicapped individuals, two groups who were often overlooked as the country valued masculine traits during the war effort, could be just as heroic as anyone else. By the mid-40s, Captain Marvel Adventures, a bi-weekly book that followed the superhero family's exploits, was selling 1.8 million copies per issue, roughly equivalent to the combined total of the top 25 comics sold this January. American children escaped into the stories, but these comics still reflected the world around them. As wartime propaganda ramped up, Shazam fought a new villain called Captain Nazi, giving children a one-dimensional, caricaturized version of evil to rally against. Like many other comics and movies during this era, the material contains racist depictions of black and Asian individuals, but that didn't discourage white parents from letting their kids read about and fall in love with the Marvel family. An often underappreciated part of Shazam's legacy is the impact of the original Mr. Mind and the Monster Society of Evil storyline on comics as a whole. Considered by many to be the first major crossover, playing out over 25 issues, the story is the longest Golden Age comic book arc. While Shazam continued fighting real-world foes like Hitler, it was revealed a manipulative space bug called Mr. Mind was pulling the strings to exacerbate global conflict, making it one of the first examples of a superhero facing a cosmic plot. Taking things a step further, it was also one of the first times numerous villains teamed up to fight a superhero, paving the way for teams like the Legion of Doom and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants to terrorize heroes for years to come. Despite the story's significance and the fact phone creator Jeff Parker recently put his own spin on it, concerns over racist material that was unfortunately common during the time recently compelled DC to cancel plans to reprint the book. There are few things that are stronger than superheroes, but the threat of lawsuits is certainly one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Since Superman was first on the scene, DC sued rival publishers over alleged copycat characters. And with Captain Marvel constantly gaining in popularity, Fawcett had a big bullseye on its back. The publisher was first notified about charges in the early 40s, but they were able to avoid going to trial until 1948, allowing them to sell comics and soak up revenue as the superhero craze hummed along. Even though Fawcett initially won the case, an appealed decision determined that Shazam was a copy of Superman, and a judge ordered the publisher to halt using the character. 
Instead of filing another appeal, Fawcett stopped publishing the character in 1953, right as superhero comics started dipping in popularity anyway. With Captain Marvel off the map for nearly two decades, the last son of Krypton was able to cement his status as the superhero poster boy of the Golden Age. Removing the character from the pop culture landscape certainly helped DC, but the bigger gain was obtaining writer Otto Binder. Binder, who wrote nearly half of Fawcett's Captain Marvel comics, including the Monster Society of Evil storyline, brought his whimsical style to DC and quickly became one of their most valued creators. While working on Superman in the 50s, Binder utilized many of the same world-building techniques he used on the Marvel family to introduce concepts like Supergirl, the Fortress of Solitude, and the Legion of Superheroes, making Superman's corner of the DCU feel more fleshed out and alive than the publisher's other characters. While Captain Marvel himself never reclaimed his position atop the sales charts, the positive sensibility and awe-inspiring nature of his stories became a fixture of the DC Universe during the Silver Age. Most people probably know Shazam as a character who exists within the DCU, but he was only incorporated through a licensing deal in 1972. The superhero boom that Superman kicked off led to the creation of numerous competing characters who ultimately sucked much of the air out of the room, leaving DC Comics desperate for a sales boost. At the time, Fawcett Comics had earned a name for itself publishing titles like Dennis the Menace since they were still prohibited from using Captain Marvel. Instead of letting the character, who had earned a cult-like following due to how difficult it was to find his original comics, sit on the shelf, DC brought him into the fold and explained his absence by claiming he was trapped in a time bubble. An added caveat to that deal was the fact that co-creator C.C. Beck actually returned to comics to once again illustrate Shazam, giving the new series a publicity and credibility boost right before launching. Unfortunately, it became clear over time that Beck's adherence to his classic, cartoony style wasn't catching on with modern audiences, who gravitated more towards the realistic, mature look of artists like Neil Adams. So the reintroduction really only initially struck big with nostalgic fans and young children who appreciated the goofier, retro aesthetic. To avoid legal problems with Marvel, who held the trademark for a Captain Marvel character, DC leaned more on the name Shazam which was originally just the name for the magical wizard who gives Billy his powers. While the hero was still called Captain Marvel for years, the name couldn't be included on any DC comic covers, and the series Shazam! The Original Captain Marvel had to be renamed Shazam! The World's Mightiest Mortal. Luckily, the term Shazam, which had been used as the catchphrase by the popular TV character Gopher Pyle throughout the 60s and 70s, stuck around in the zeitgeist making it an easy phrase for fans to glob onto. Shazam! 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 Despite being unutilized for almost 20 years, Shazam was still a hit with audiences, as evidenced by the short-lived 1974 TV series that saw him drive cross-country in a van, stopping crime wherever he could. It was only in 2011, after years of confusion and legal tiptoeing, did DC officially change the character's name to Shazam, meaning that both the hero and wizard share the same name. But as Jeff Johns explained to the New York Post, a lot of people already thought that was his name anyway, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. While he's become an essential member of the Justice League and has helped save the world multiple times, most of Shazam's memorable moments since being incorporated into the DCU occur in team-up books or Elseworlds series typically aimed at children. Now I know they're not the best source, but on a top 10 list composed by comic book, most of the Shazam stories they recommend are character reintroductions or golden age tales that don't reflect his current importance in the DC universe. His most infamous appearance is likely his role as a bodyguard for Lex Luthor in Kingdom Come. The series somewhat watered the character down to a basic, personality-less level, but the beautifully painted battles against Superman and the character's ultimate sacrifice at the end of the story cemented his status as one of DC's most inspiring champions. With the new movie on the horizon, DC Comics is finally putting some renewed effort into the Shazam family. Written by Jeff Johns and illustrated by Dale Eaglesham, the creative team who previously revitalized the Justice Society of America for a modern audience 
This new series will hopefully reharness the sense of wonder and excitement that first made Shazam a top tier character. He's come a long way from being the most popular superhero in the world, but the charm and positivity that defined him then still hold strong today. More than almost any other character in comics, the sense of wish fulfillment associated with Shazam makes it easy for new, young fans to constantly fall in love with him. With all this activity building around Shazam, who knows, maybe the character's future will be just as mighty as his past.